Hello to everyone. Welcome to the course on numerical linear algebra and application. Today we are going to have 21st lecture. Before going to the 21st lecture, let us quickly recall what we did in the previous lecture. Previous lecture, we have done how we can handle the system Ax is equal to b when we have more than one right side vector. These kind of examples you can find out in many physical applications as spoke and today we are going to have a different concept how actually the stability could be estimated by computing the condition number that is computing and estimating the condition number. The obvious way to locate the condition number will be compute it from its definition. So you will have A inverse. Compute norm of A and norm of A inverse and multiply them. So essentially what I mean to say is condition number is nothing but norm of A times of norm of A inverse. So if you multiply these two things you get what we call a condition number. So obviously when I do not mention the specific time of norm it is understood that it is a two norm. We have seen that computing the inverse of A requires about 8 n cube by 3 flops where n is size of the matrix, n is the size of the matrix. Where n is the size of the matrix. So you require 8 n cube by 3 flops that is floating point operations per second. Thus finding the condition number by explicitly finding A inverse is much more expensive than finding the solution of Ax is equal to B itself. So therefore one has to be very careful while trying to find out the A inverse and norm of A inverse. On the other hand to compute the condition number we need to know norm of A inverse not the inverse itself further the exact value of condition A itself is seldom needed an estimate is sufficient, an estimate is sufficient. The question therefore arises whether we can get a reasonable estimate of A inverse without computing, without computing the inverse of A explicitly. We present an optimization based algorithm as shown here. What is this estimation based algorithm is? An optimization algorithm it was during the year 1984 has proposed a method for estimating norm of A inverse <clears throat> based on an optimization technique. This technique seems to be quite suitable for randomly generated matrices. Let a inverse is equal to B 
that is b i j define a function f x this f x is equal to norm of b x of 1 that will be equivalent to summation i is equal to 1 to n summation j is equal to 1 to n b i j x j b i j x j then the norm of b1 is equal to norm of a inverse with respect to 1 norm that will be equivalent to maximum of f x norm of x 1 is equal to 1. Thus, the problem is to find maximum of the convex function f over the convex set s is equal to s is equal to x belongs to r power n such that norm of x of 1 is less than a is equal to 1 norm of x 1 is less than or equal to 1 so what is this algorithm is which we call it as hagen norm the condition number estimator so this algorithm goes in the following fashion input is an n by n matrix a and an n vector b output is an approximation of norm of a inverse with respect to one norm step 0 is set rho is equal to norm of a inverse is 0 and b is equal to 1 by n 1 by n 1 by n transpose and step 1 is solve ax is equal to b step 2 is test if norm of x is less than or equal to rho norm of x is less than or equal to rho if so go to step 6 if so go to step 6 otherwise set rho is equal to norm of x 1 and go to step 3 and what is the step 3 is solve a transpose z is equal to y where y i is equal to 1 if x i is greater than or equal to 0 y i is equal to minus 1 if x i is less than 0 and this step is set j is equal to argument of maximum of mod of z i i is equal to 1 to n step 5 is if mod of z i is greater than z transpose b update b is equal to e j where e j is the jth unit vector and return to step 1 else go to step 6 
and step 6 is set norm of A inverse that is 1 norm is equal to rho then compute the condition number rho of norm of A1. It is well known that the maximum of a convex function is obtained at an extreme point. Hager method consists in finding this maximum systematically. Hager remarks that the algorithm usually stops after two iterations. An excellent survey of different condition number estimators, an excellent survey of different condition number estimators, including Hagger's and their performance has been given by Higam. Performance given by Higam. Let us quickly see how this algorithm would be helpful. Look at this matrix, 3 rows, 3 columns. Condition number of A is 2.9575 times of 10 power 17. And if you use a software, the condition number is 3.469 times of 10 power minus 18. That means very small. So that means the matrix A is close to singular matrix. What is step 0 is B is equal to 1 over 3, 1 over 3, 1 over 3. And iteration 1 is x is equal to 1.0895 minus 2.5123 and rho is 5.0245 y is equal to 1 minus 1 1 transpose and z is equal to 10 power 6. 2.0271 minus 3.3785 1.3514 transpose and j is equal to 2 mod of j2 is 10 power 6 16 times of 3.3785 which is greater than z transpose of b which is minus of 1.3340. In the second iteration, x is equal to 10 power 17 and it is minus of 1.34564, 2.7128 minus of 1.3564 transpose. And the norm of x1 is 5.4255 multiplied with 10 power 17. So, what is the remark over here is since norm of x1 greater than rho, we take norm of a inverse is 5.4255 times of 10 power 17. This is an excellent estimate of norm of A inverse with respect to first norm. Note that condition 1A is rho times of norm A1 that is 8.6808 into 10 power 18 and a norm of A inverse is 1.8014 10 power 16. So, if you do that, 
condition of A is 2.88 into 10 power centimeter, very big number. So, that is large condition number. Large condition number. So, how do you come across this errors? One of the remedy is use component wise perturbation under the errors. If the component wise bounds of the perturbation are known, then the following perturbation result obtained by Skeel 1979 holds. That means it satisfies. In the following norm stands for infinity norm. So, what is this theorem says? Let Ax is equal to b. This is the system you will have. Ax is equal to b is the system, and a plus delta a times of x plus delta x is equal to b plus delta b and assuming that let delta a is less than or equal to epsilon into mod a. So, where epsilon is small. So, delta of x upon norm of x is less than or equal to norm of a inverse into norm A plus A inverse into B upon 1 minus epsilon times of norm of A inverse into norm of A times of X, where epsilon is small perturbation. The number, condition number of AX that will be equivalent to norm of A inverse, norm of AX divided by norm of X. will be called skills condition number and condition number A is nothing but norm of A inverse times of norm of A, the upper bound of skills number, this is upper bound. An important property of condition number of AX is skill number is invariant under row scaling. So, if you do the row scaling, the skill number will be invariant. It can Therefore, be much smaller than usual condition number that is condition number of Ax is useful when the columns of A inverse vary widely. So, when the columns of norm of our A inverse vary widely, then you can have this condition number. Then one can see that how you can implement by using the iterator, iterative implement. Suppose you computed solution x, x hat of the system Ax is equal to b. So, you have the system Ax is equal to b it is not acceptable. It is then natural to wonder if x cap can be refined cheaply by making use of the triangulation of the matrix A already available. So, the following process what we call iterative refinement can be used to refine x hat iteratively up to some desired accuracy. What is the iterative algorithm refinement? Input is A is R of n by n, n rows n columns and B is R of n over n and tolerance is epsilon then output is a refined solution set x of 0 is equal to x hat. A refined solution x of 0 is equal to x hat. For k is equal to 0, 1, 2, etc. Compute the residual vector rk that is b minus axk. So, r of k is equal to b minus ax of k. Calculate the correction vector CK by solving the system A 
a times of c of k is equal to r of k. Using the same triangulation of a that was used to obtain x of 0. Update the solution x of k plus 1 will be equivalent to x of k plus c of k and then test for the convergence. So, this is the test for the convergence that is norm of x of k plus 1 minus x of k that is 2 norm norm of x of k is less than epsilon that is the tolerance then stop. You can see from this example matrix A is equal to let us say 3 rows 3 columns and it is also 3 rows 1 column 1 1 0 0 2 1 0 0 3 and B is 0 0.0001 Point zero 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 one minus of one point six six six. The exact solution is like this minus of point two seven 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 point two seven seven eight minus of point five 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 five. Correct to four figures. So you get the solution. This is one one one, which is the first iteration and when you put k is equal to 0 then r of 0 is b minus ax of 0. So, you get the solution like this minus of 1.9999 minus of 2.9999 minus of 4.6666. The solution of ac0 is r0 and the c0 is nothing but this value minus of 1.2777 minus of 0.7222 minus of 1.5555 and you can write x of 1 as x of 0 plus c of 0 so ultimately you will end up with this matrix and when you compute this condition number it turns out to be 3.8078 which is small then you can say that the system is well conditioned system. Now next we see accuracy obtained by iterative refinement to what extent we got the accuracy. Suppose that the iteration converges then the error at k plus 1 step will be less than the error at kth step. So, obviously, iterative refinement means the kth step refinement will be always higher than the k plus 1 refinement. So, that means we can compute norm of x cap minus x of k plus 1 divided by norm of x is less than or equal to c times of x minus x of k upon norm of x. Then if c is equal to 10 power minus s, there will be a, again a approximately s figures to iteration, s significant digits. So, we can compute the flop count for this algorithm. The processor is quite cheap since a has already been triangulized to solve the original system ax is equal to b. Each iterative requires only big O of n square flops. So, what is the remark over here? Iterative refinement is a very useful technique. Gaussian elimination with partial pivoting followed by iterative refinement is the most practical approach for solving a linear system accurately. Sekil as shown that in most cases even our steps of iterative refinement is sufficient. So, we can also see the algorithm in Ingman 2002 and 
Janowski and Wagnikowski in 1977. So we will see estimating the condition number from iterative refinement. How we can compute the iterate the condition number, how it will stabilize the system. A very crude estimate of the condition number of matrix A is 10 power t times of 1 minus 1 by k. That is the crude estimate. Where in 1981, where t is the number of digits and k is the number of iterations performed for the processor to converge. 10 power t times of 1 minus 1 by k, where k is number of iterations, t is number of significant digits. So, if you look at this example, consider the solving the ill condition system. So, A is given, B is given. The system is ill conditioned because condition number of A is equal to 3.2465 times or 10 power 3. So, the exact solution turns out to be 2 comma 3. And if you use this approximation, x of 0 is 1.667, 3.333. And when you go k is equal to 0, r0 is b minus ax0, it turns out to be like this. So, solution will become like this. So, ultimately, this is the solution which you get it. So, you will find out several applications of these criteria. One is the triangular tridiagonal systems. Consider the one dimensional study heat conduction equation as spoken through a wire. In such case, the temperature remains constant with respect to time. The equation dou du square t by dou x square is 0. That means there is no viscous dissipation. The difference analog of this equation is t of x plus delta x minus 2 tx plus t of x minus delta x is 0 and delta is the increment. And if you look at the temperature at point x is denoted by t, so we can write it as ti plus 1 minus 2 ti plus ti minus 1 is equal to 0. That is the temperature at any point is just the average of its temperatures at the two nearest neighboring points. So if you have a ti, so it is 2 ti is nothing but t of i plus 1 plus t of i minus 1 implies t of i is equal to t of i plus 1 plus t of i minus 1 divided by 2. Suppose the domain of the problem is 0 less than x less than 1 divide now the domain into 4 segments of equal length. So delta x will become 0.25. So it is 1 by 4, 2 by 4, 3 by 4, 4 by 4. Suppose that we know the temperature at the end point x0 is 0 and x4 is 1. That is, we will write it as t0 is equal to alpha 1, t4 is equal to alpha 2. So, these are the boundary conditions of the given problem. So, we can write from the above equation at node x0 is equal to 0, x1 is equal to delta x, x2 is equal to delta x like this. You can write this, delta x1 is equal to 0, t0 is alpha 1. At x1 is equal to delta x1, t0 is 2t1 plus t2 and so on and so forth. So, the matrix from these equations can be written as like this. Five rows, five columns. The triadical system, the solution of this system will be given in temperature set the nodes x1, x2, x3. So, essentially you will have a rough structure and you are trying to find out the temperature by using the two extreme values and which is nothing but average of those two temperatures. Symmetric tridiagonal and diagonally dominant systems. Some examples. In order to see how such systems arise, consider now the unsteady conduction of heat. So, heat transfer takes place in solid bodies and also few metal bodies. The condition implies that the temperature T varies with time. The heat equation will be like this. 1 by alpha into dou T by dou X is equal to alpha times of d square by dx square. So, block triadical matrix is to see how block triadical matrix system arises in applications, consider the two-dimensional Laplace equation. This is the Laplace equation. A discrete analog to this equation similar to Laplace equation method, I can do the Laplace transform, but for the timing you can see the indices which I have taken. This will give rise to a linear system of n plus 2 variables. 
So variational formulation of a two-point boundary value problem. This is also one of the applications. Let us consider two-point boundary value problem. Minus u prime plus u into delta x is equal to 0. u0 0 is equal to u of 1 is equal to 1. And this has become the two-point boundary value problem. So I will stop over here. And what we learned today is how the approximations can be done by using the different right hand side vectors and what are the consequences, what is the determinant, how the boundary value problem will have a variational principle and all those stuff. So in the next class we will see some more examples on the boundary value problem. So I will stop over here. Thank you very much.